Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of SBJ Live. I'm Dan Kaufman. This is Fan-Centric Data, How Leagues and Teams Create Data-Driven Fan Experiences, presented by Stellar Algo. Thank you all very much for being here. In just a moment, we will get to our panelists. But before we do that, as you are joining us here, if you've been to an SBJ Live episode, you know that I go over just a couple of ground rules that I hope everyone will help us uh, go by. And they will, they, what they will do is they will allow us to have the most effective experience for both the panelists and for, most importantly for the audience. So uh, these are the ground rules for every episode of SBJ Live for the audience members. And really they relate to one ground rule and that's just we want your interaction, we want your engagement. This is gonna be a great conversation among the four of us up here, but the great thing about this platform is that it allows for you all to interact with us as well. And so what does that mean? One, it means that there's a chat bubble in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen please go ahead and introduce yourself in that chat bubble and tell us who you are and what you do. And if you see people you know, feel free to message them directly in that chat as well. We really encourage that. And then directly to the left of the chat bubble is a questions bubble. That's where we want your questions. There's no specific Q&A period at the end. Please submit your questions whenever they come into your head and you can upvote questions that you see in there. We will do our best to get to as many questions as possible, but we certainly will get to the questions with the most votes before we get to the other ones. Uh, that's really it. Enjoy, interact with us. We'll go for about 40, 45 minutes, but if we have a ton of questions from the audience, we will keep going for the full hour. All right, fan-centric data, how leagues and teams create data-driven experiences. We have Vincent Urkandia from uh, Stellar Algo. He's the founder and chief executive officer. Curran Racklin, senior vice president, fan engagement, analytics, and research from the National Hockey League. Zach Shapiro, Vice President, Data Strategy and Analytics from the National Basketball Association. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. I'm gonna give each of you 30 seconds to a minute to just introduce yourselves and I will start with Zach. Thanks, Dan. Uh, great to see you. Great, grateful for the opportunity to talk with Vincent Curran today. Uh, hi everyone, Zach Shapiro. Uh, I work for the National Basketball Association. I've been here for a little bit more than 10 years now. I work in our data strategy and analytics function, a centralized resource to help stakeholders here at the league, and also work very closely with teams on a lot of what they are doing in their particular parts uh, of the NBA. Uh, I have a lot of experience working closely with teams on a litany of uh, initiatives, and obviously per the tenor of today's conversation, uh, very focused on fan data and leveraging that information to drive a strong fan experience. Thank you, Zach. Current. Uh, thanks again for the opportunity. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Curran. I've uh, been with the NBA for uh, almost six years. It'll be six years in a couple of weeks. Um, our group uh, works across kind of how I think about the life cycle of our of our uh, fan data and digital experience. So uh, bringing, exposing uh, more fans, more people out there to our game, uh, the collection of, uh, of data across a wide spectrum of sources, um, the engineering, warehousing of all that, the analytics, uh, and then the kind of digital marketing and outbound fan engagement uh, side, as well as uh, working across all 32 of our clubs um, with a uh, with kind of cohesive data sharing and making sure that uh, that they're um, the best equipped to succeed as possible. Um, so I'm happy to talk about this today. Thank you, Karen. Last but not least, Vince. Yeah, hey, hey Dan. Uh, yeah, thanks for for uh, having me on with this uh, great group here today. Uh, I've got uh, so CEO and co-founder at Stellar Algo, uh, almost 20 years of experience in data and technology. Uh, driven roles now. Uh, most of that has been within the sports entertainment. Uh, I've been uh, in roles in North America and Europe, um, leading right up until founding Stellar Algo in, in 2016. Thank you, Vince. To the audience, as you're joining us, make sure you introduce yourselves in the chat and say hello, and then give us your questions. There's a questions tab, put the questions in at any time, and we will do our best to get to them. Vince, I'm going to stick with you. I want you to kind of set the scene for us. Look, this the audience members, uh, I know most of you guys out there know about the importance of using data to improve fan experiences in sports. We're going to talk about a particularly interesting segment of that, in my opinion, and that's how teams and leagues can coordinate around fan data to drive even better fan experiences. Vince, what does that mean to you? Tell us what we're going to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think it's a it's an exciting time uh, for this conversation. Uh, we, we can read the headlines about how the sports industry continues to expand and grow. It's a two hundred billion dollar ecosystem now. You know, team valuations growing. Um, you know, rights fees on on broad broadcast or for advertisers continuing to grow. Um, 
you know, and that's really underpinned by the fact that we've got the most passionate customers in the world. They're 10 times or, or more passionate about, you know, the, you know, the teams and players that, that they cheer for than any other audience. Um, so, so it's a really exciting time to be you know, in our industry. Uh, you know, however, with these growing, growing rights fees and valuations and changing consumer preferences, uh, you know, it is, it is uh, forcing us as an in industry to, you know, think about how to continue to innovate uh, in order to meet the needs of these changing uh, fans, understand who they are. Uh, and, you know, I think what this conversation, you know, gets me excited uh, with regards to is, is a lot of that future value we're looking for is, does you know, come down to collaborating around that fan. Um, because we've got, you know, we've got, you know, leagues that, that have an important role to, to play in understanding and nurturing that fan. You know the teams that they work closely with, and then and then the partners, and and you know some of those I, I've seen even in the chat here today. We've got you know your broadcasters and your your major advertisers and, and other players that are that are partners in this ecosystem. That's all built around the fan. So you know, we've got two incredible experts here in, in Curran and Zach who who have been innovating in this space. They they've seen the NBA and NHL even over the the course of the last few years. Um, you know, coming out of the pandemic, like rapidly changing and how they try to meet the needs of, of their, you know, stakeholders uh, for the benefit of fans. Um, so that's really the backdrop of what I'm excited about. Yeah. Vince, I'm going to stick with you. And then I want Kern and, and Zach to chime in. Um, the question is this, what challenges did you see when you first started thinking through <clears throat> this concept of making sure that there was better collaboration on data between teams and leagues? Um, and, and how did you go about trying to solve them? And then Zach, Kern, please chime in. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so so for 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 Stellar and you know our our role in this is really you know bringing that technology that makes that collaboration uh, between the, the 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 leagues and their teams uh, easier. Uh, you know, this is there's a the the, the challenge is there's a, a lot of different systems that fans are interacting with, and then there's m multiple stakeholders we're talking about, uh, but we're trying to drive seamless and relevant experiences uh, for the fan and you know that can that can be really hard but you know we're, we work with you know now we work with over uh, seven leagues directly uh, over 240 uh, you know sports properties and their partners uh, so you know that that sort of puts us in a unique position to create the tools that make it easy to what we like to say is put the fan opportunities at your fingertips because you know there is all this data but really the magic is in how do we make these fan opportunities easy to, to access and action so we can uh, create the value uh, for the ecosystem. I, I think yeah, Vince said, some, yeah, I, I think Vince said something really interesting. A lot of things, very interesting things there, but the, but the litany of touch points that fans have, and you just take a look at it from the fan perspective. I'm a fan of many sports teams and how I interact with those sports teams is going to differ by the league and the team I'm a fan of. And then you look at that from a data perspective. It, we, we just have to take a step back and acknowledge data collection and data usage is really difficult. Um, we at the league have been investing time and resources and energy to create our own fan data platform through the avenues of touch points that we have with our fans so that we can create a personalized experience. Teams have been doing that for since longer than I've been at the NBA. All 30 teams have robust data infrastructures and marketing infrastructures that they leverage on their own terms to communicate with fans. And I think the challenge for us is how do we ensure that the fan is getting a unified and personalized experience, no matter who is communicating with them and who holds that relationship? Ideally, we are arming the right uh, stakeholder on our side with the correct information to create that optimal experience for fans. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 it's always fun speaking last because everybody else thought all the smart things first. But um, but I get to I, go first next time. All right, well, that's <laughs> also hard. Um, but I think uh, I think taking that that cohesive. Um, uh, kind of experience that both Zach and Vince alluded to is really important because fans, customers, we, they don't differentiate between the, each experience, the league, the teams, they're seeing it as one general piece. Um, and to create, to take a, a variety, a disparate amount of, of data, and we're pulling from, from you know, hundreds of sources at the league level, plus what the clubs are all doing, um, and creating a kind of a unified experience so that fans feel that it's seamless. Uh, if they do something that is a league-based initiative, voting for it in the All-Star Game, for example, or a club-based something like 
Maybe you went to a season ticket holder event. Those are two totally different platforms that are going to be different types of data, different people involved, different organizations. So the, the, the trick is, I think, um, and the challenge we've had, and I think we're, we're consistent, constantly going to be solving for, because it's never going to end, is to pull all that together so that no one knows that these are all different experiences, right? The goal is so that it's completely seamless. Um, and there's business processes pieces to that. There's also technical processes and pieces to that, that we have to manage and, uh, you know, Vince mentioned 240 sports properties. That's 240 different data schemas. That's 240 different sources of data. And like pulling all that together in one place uh, is a little bit of a trick. Um, but but I think that's the that's what we're trying to achieve. Um, so that you know you work very hard, you work a lot, so that it looks like it was easy. And that's kind of what, I think that's what we're trying to do when it comes to providing that, that unified experience for our fans. Yeah, Kern, I'm going to stick with you. Um, was there hesitancy, concern from the perspective of the teams when you know the leagues kind of I don't know if the leagues were the ones that approached or not, but if the leagues came to the teams and said, look, hey, we're going to start doing this, was there hesitancy, even just from the perspective of like, well, wait a minute, I already know my data the best. Like, why do I need to do this? Uh, yeah, I don't know if hesitancy is the right word, but I think, you know, everyone wants to understand what we're doing. Um, and, I, and, I'm, and I think that, you know, when I was on the club side, uh, I felt like I know, knew my fans better than the league did. Uh, when Zach's team or when my team came to our office to talk to us, I was like, what are we doing? We know this stuff better. And probably right. And right now, if a club said we know our fans better, they're probably right, right? They're, they're, fan. they're working with them more. But it is about kind of that incremental understanding and knowledge and providing that cohesive experience that we were just talking about. And so showing that there is a benefit uh, to pulling this together and that it's not, you know, we're not competing with each other, right? It's just, it's, it's not, we're not trying to, to do what they're trying to do. Um, I have very few tickets to sell. Um, so trying to work with our clubs so that they saw the benefit of that. And then also understanding that every club has a different set of needs and benefits and, and, uh, and, and resources internally. Um, and so while I think every club can benefit uh, and help therefore every fan, how they're benefited in the process is gonna look a little different both because the, the organizations are different, but also because the fans are different, um, uh, you know, especially across, uh, uh, you know, 32 clubs. So, um, but once we were able to have that kind of understanding of what we're trying to do, and this is really about a better fan experience and literally nothing else, um, that I think is a, is a driver. And that's why we're able to, you know, ha have this initiative move forward. Dan, I, I, I certainly remember the day well when we visited Curran and he told us that he knew his fans better than we did. And we and we took that to heart very well. I mean, I, I, if I if I can add to it, I, I think there's been just a general groundswell on better understanding fans, more personalization and how we get there is more important than who's sort of the owner of the information. From a league perspective, we've always try to distill this down in terms of discussing with teams where we think the benefit of collaborating more closely in this space is to a few things. One, um, as I mentioned earlier, teams have already incredibly robust data infrastructure of fans. There's likelihood, and we've seen this bear fruit already in the early stages of the initiative that we have on the NBA side, is that there's likely records of fans, uh, either geographically who are, or who have explicitly said they're fans of certain teams that a team may not have in their database. We want to make sure teams actually have access to those people so that, again, spinning it to the fan side, if I'm the fan of the Memphis, if I'm a fan of the Memphis Grizzlies, I want to make sure I'm feeling like I'm communicating with the Grizzlies and I'm getting that customized experience. Additionally, if I already have fans uh, in my database as a team, I want more information. I want to have a better understanding of the global touch points that this fan, is this fan engaging with the NBA app, other direct to consumer products, are they purchasing retail? Um, all these touch points that can help me better understand um, what this fan particularly cares about. And then I think obviously, maybe I'm teeing this up for Vince a little bit. It's we're talking a lot about the data. It's also about how we get that data and make it actionable. And I think that's where working closely with Vince and his team at Stellar Algo has really uh, moved this initiative forward for us, making sure we have a technology that can take that data, really actively segment people and provide that personalization and make it feel like it's truly a fan forward uh, discussion. Hmm. Vince, Zach teed it up for you. Uh, you know, Do you wanna talk a little bit more about taking that data and making it actionable? Yeah, I think so and that's, you know, I think that when you ask about the challenges and Kern and Zach are alluding it to to this is, you know, it's also that the whether league to league and team to team, there's different, you know, sophistication levels um, around, you know, the, the technology, the 
uh, you know, the robustness uh, of the data asset, um, the maturity of that data asset, you know, the, the, yeah, the processes within the organization and having the right people, the right seats to really take action. So, you know, with, with our experience, what we are all about is, is, is really the, the technology and then, you know, what we call the plays off of that technology to go and realize the value of these, these fan opportunities, uh, because, you know, we're doing a lot at, at our teams. We're doing a lot at the leagues. Um, so the, the key word here is making it easy. And when we do that, it, it makes the teams happy. The league is, is bringing new opportunities to us. We know more about our fans and our, our local market and internationally than we ever had ha, have before. Um, and then vice versa, the leagues are, are you know, providing value and they're able to, to then uh, nurture fans as well through their own channels. Uh, and, and that's you know, shifted in a lot of cases as well uh, because you know, ticket sales continue to be the, the bedrock of, of the industry, but you know, that is rapidly evolving and the leagues have a, an increasing role and influence to play in monetizing you know, fans uh, more you know, 365 days a year. Very, very interesting comments, Vince. We, we got a great question from the audience, and maybe we get back to some of your comments in a minute, Vince, but uh, I'm going to get to this question now. To the audience members, keep the questions coming. We will do our best to get to all of them. This is from Dan McBride. Thank you for the question, Dan. How do you see AI developing and impacting, enhancing the aggregation, consolidation, and analysis of fan data to make a more efficient, personalized, and memorable experience for each fan? Who wants to tackle that one first? Do we have any hand raisers? Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take a shot at it first. Um, and and uh, nice to hear from you, Dan. It's been a while. Um, I I, um, I think uh, it'll it'll be a little slower into the full adoption, um, generally because uh, just I think because there's a lot of unknowns and people don't exactly know, um, you know how. I guess how it's going to work or what the risks are when you have something that you don't have total control over that has access to the internet. What does that look like? And there's some concern. So it'll probably take a little time to fully adopt. But the if you're able to do things that we're currently doing uh, and just do them a lot faster, and when it's processing data or uh, looking for outliers or looking for trends, both on a data um, kind of processing and analytical standpoint, but also from a quality control and, and, and uh, accuracy standpoint, um, I think that there'll be increased adoption and that things will start to move a lot faster. Um, I, I, you know, I don't think that's a concern in terms of the people doing the work now. I think part of that knowledge base will have to shift a little bit in terms of where your focus is, but I think that uh, it can be a valuable tool once we get a good handle of how it can be applied. Um, because what you don't want is, you know, uh, first of all, people use the term AI without really understanding what that means, and it becomes very broad. Um, we've been saying it for a long time. We now feel it's better, um, but I don't, I don't think that that's always the case. And I think a better understanding of of how it works and what it can do um, will lead to greater adoption. So I think it'll be a little slower um, than maybe we'd like to see, just in general. But I think that's the smart way to approach it, uh, at least from our perspective. We've got some other good questions coming in from the audience. Austin Fletcher has a question here. He's got three upvotes. When you think of fan data, what data do you believe is the most impactful to driving personalized fan experience and revenue? And what data do you find is the most difficult to capture? So that's almost two questions from Austin here. What data is, is the most impactful in driving that fan experience, if, if you can uh, put your finger on that? And then what data do you find is the most difficult to capture? Zach, can we flip this one to you since Aaron was volunteer for the other one? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Austin, that's a great question. And I do agree with you, Dan. It, it's it's a little bit like two questions in one. I think from a revenue perspective, what we see is historical um, actions from an individual fan in terms of what they've purchased is the predominant driver in what they're going to do in the future. And we obviously pay close attention. We have a number of models running and we work closely with teams and they have their own individual models to help them better understand who is more likely to purchase, potentially purchase more and more frequently. When you think about selling, as Vince said, you know, a single game ticket versus plans, um, that past purchase history is still going to be the most powerful information you can leverage. Um, I think the more interesting piece of it is the, the improved fan experience. And I think this is where our development a redevelopment of the MBA app and launch of the MBA app before this past season uh, and the inclusion of MBA ID as a benefits and rewards uh, system and being able to collect more data on our fans on their own terms is where we are starting to see um, 
better data capture and the ability uh, to personalize that experience a little bit better. We have an understanding on people's interaction with the MBA app, um, when they are engaging with different pieces of content, um, whether they're going to different menus and they're looking for retail uh, tickets, um, tracking teams, being able to provide us more information proactively. Um, basically giving the fans the key to the car in terms of being able to tell us what they want to tell us so that we can action on that information. That's where I think the current frontier and honestly even the next frontier as we get more granular on that information is going to be for us to continue to personalize the fan experience and be able to leverage that in a multitude of ways. Yeah. We could have a whole, just to add yeah. and I just interject because both those questions sort of coming together for me on a thought and you know, obviously have a probably a whole session on either one of those but um you know i think one of the exciting things from a league's perspective is that the leagues have, have, do have data points that the, the teams don't have um and then they do have a volume of data um that the teams don't have as well so you know proprietary data sets are going to continue to become more important um you know we're, we think about you know you know, the usage of AI really spans across the industry and across like these data pipelines and, and experiences we're discussing. But, you know, in, in this particular form, the leagues do have, you know, large proprietary data sets, which when we, we talk, like Zach mentioned, training and predicting can be done on a level that you just can't do it for an individual team. So when we talk about collaboration, we can, you, you, you could have the best, you know, the best biggest team around say, hey, we've got our own models and that's great. That's fantastic. But when you think about, you know, these additional data points and the ability for a league to train on these big proprietary data assets, that is a really, that's a big strength of our industry, frankly, that we have that level of engagement data um, and the leagues can aggregate that in a way that an individual team can. Thank you, Vince. Thank you, Zach. I'm going to shift to a question of mine, but audience members keep the questions coming in. I see there's one more that we will get to, but please keep uh, throwing the questions in there and we'll do our best to get to all of them. I want to talk a little bit about brand activation, sponsorship, um, and how data can be shared across teams and leagues to effectively deliver uh, an experience that a brand wants or prove ROI that a, that a brand uh, wants to see. Um, where are we currently in that space? How much room to grow do we have? Zach, uh, if I could start with you, uh, uh, that'd be my preference because you brought it up on our prep call. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think we've made a good amount of progress, but I would still argue there's a long way to go in terms of the opportunity. Um, I mentioned earlier in this conversation the notion of just us from the league side, our value proposition is being able to provide more fan records and being able to augment existing fan records that teams already have. That's looking at it from a very personalized experience, uh, fan communication, micro um targeting perspective there's obviously you take a step back and just think about who is my audience it's the question we've asked for years and years and years and it's still oftentimes very difficult to answer to sort of conceptualize and explain to somebody in five bullet points that's really what partners want from us they want us to talk about our audience the opportunities different fan segments and what we want to do as part of this our league-wide data initiative here at the league and i think you're going to see this in a lot of different industries and across sports leagues is not only provide the information but provide products um, insights and reporting for teams to be able to better talk about their audience more broadly domestically in areas that they may not have had information already, but also internationally over time. I think we're just scratching the surface in terms of insights that we can tell partners about our fans, not only at the macro level of different segments, how it's evolving and changing over time, uh, but where we also see those connection points between what we have in terms of a sports property, as Vince mentioned, and how valuable that is to a lot of different brands out there, and then being able to storytell in parallel to what we're doing here. Um, open this up to current as well, but I'll, I'll put a follow on to that question. Are you already seeing more satisfied brand partners? And if there are examples without giving away confidential information or sharing maybe the specific of the brand, are there examples that you can speak to? Yeah, would, would be happy to. I, again, I, I would reiterate, um, you know, I, I think we're still early in the process here in terms of what we can leverage, but we've actually seen some successful use cases in terms of storytell helping teams storytell about their global audience and being able to bring those touch points that we've talked about in terms of what we capture here on the NBA league side and being able to share those insights with teams. If you, if you 
if you think about it, our marketing efforts are obviously a little bit more global in nature in terms of what we're trying to accomplish in terms of events we're putting on in different regions of the world and people we're trying to engage and bring into the broader funnel of the MBA. We've been able to share those insights down uh, to the team level in a lot of their, in, in a few different partner conversations. And we've actually seen a few specific international deals get across the finish line. Uh, and we've been told that much of it is due to the data and insights we've been able to provide in those situations. I, I would also say from a partnership perspective, I mean, I, I, I agree that I think that there's a lot of opportunity in front. I don't think we're as far down the road as we will be. I think we're going to make a lot more progress. I think that's partially a function of the fact that ticketing tends to get more attention and then there's a focus. And then because that's a focus, it's a shorter sales cycle. It's bigger data. It's there's more understanding. The thought initially was, OK, we'll just take that kind of practice and move it to our partnerships business and it doesn't really work that way. It's got to be, it's different data, it's different study. And so I think as people, uh, by people, I mean, clubs and leagues started to kind of realize that the nature of the understanding changed um, and being able to provide not just ROI related uh, data and feedback to partners, uh, either prospective or current, um, but also broadly able to me kind of cater messaging, right? That's part of the personalized fan experience and, and what we moved from a let's just email everyone in the entire database every single time to let's be a little yeah. more targeted and smart about maybe the, you know, the total numbers are lower, but we actually have people who are more engaged or more interested in what you're offering. Well, how do we know that? That's where that kind of analysis comes in and a better understanding of their behavior, whether it's the purchase information that Zach was alluding to before or non-purchase digital engagement or how, what they're looking for um, specifically, I think has is, is been helpful to that. And so um, that's been a shift. And then the other thing I would mention is, the biggest driver for this, at least in my experience, is the partners are asking now. Um, we've had, we've had a, over the last several years, there's been a pretty significant shift. I think, you know, before the plague, but especially coming out of the plague, like what can we, um, what can we better show the value for? And the partners are saying, hey, we need to actually have some quantitative measurements on this. Um, and uh, from our perspective, uh, with a quarter of our league uh, in Canada, seeing the difference between Canadian or companies and American companies, there's, there is a difference, which means, okay, we're not only personalizing the experience for our fans, we also are for our partners because they're not all looking for the same sort of information. Um, part of that is because what's legal in each country, but part of it also is just the, the nature of, of the difference of businesses. And so as companies start to ask more and drive more, that makes it easier for us on the back of house analytics data, not necessarily front revenue generating side to say, hey, this is important. Look, they think so too. How do we how do we get more involved? And that's been a, that's that's a driver that's going to push us, I think, into the future. Let's stick with brands and, and partners and sponsors. We've got a good question from the audience from Alan Hamilton. Alan says, what are your sponsors key priorities with digital campaigns, brand awareness, engagement, data conversion, reach, innovation? Yes, I think <laughs> it's the answer. I mean, it depends on the partners. I think we're getting smarter as a league about um, and in an industry. Uh, if I could speak for that, uh, in terms of asking the right questions of our partners and what they're looking for. Um, it does change. Um, there's two parts to it. The first is, okay, what do you want to accomplish by this? And then the second part is how, and those are different things, right? We have some, we've had partners in the past, or I've seen partnerships where, yeah, we're trying to grow a fan club membership or a loyalty program, and we're showing digital, uh, either advertising or engagement or a, 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 a an average, you know, a, a spot in terms of, a, a, you know, you, you're sponsoring uh, an activity or whatever, um, but that doesn't necessarily drive to that that target. So the creative doesn't match up with the goal. Well, if you if you don't tell anyone that you have a loyalty program, but you're saying, hey, come join our loyalty program, that's the ROI, that hurts the program. And then what's the actual success? So I think understanding the specifics of what they're looking for. That and it's a very different question to answer because it and I and I seems kind of corny, so I apologize. But it really does depend on the partner. We have some who you know everybody knows them, right? Like it's not it's not you're not learning about a certain brands t tomorrow, right? So I think uh, everybody heard of Pepsi before we got here. That it's not necessarily what they're trying to achieve. Um, and some is smaller. It is about growth. It's about awareness. But some it's also like database growth. Also. They want to capture more people who engage and fans of hockey. That helps them customize their messaging because they're trying to do the same thing. So um, it really depends on the organization of the partner. Um, uh, and I think we're, but I do think we're getting smarter. If you'd asked that question a few years ago, call it five, 
I don't know that the answer would always be so crisp because I don't think we've always been asking those questions. And I don't think the partners always knew. They just wanted the association. And I think we're, everybody's getting smarter. Um, and we're kind of, and as a result, things are moving forward. Thank you, Karen. Thanks for the question, Alan. Another audience question from Brandon Schaefer. Brandon says, in a world with multiple email marketing platforms out there between standalone and ticketing provider and house ones, how do teams and venues best collect fan information? And do they use one central email marketing platform that works for them, i.e. Factorial, TM Engage, Pacaloqua, et cetera? I think I, I, from an MBA perspective, if I'm understanding the, the question properly, Brandon, it, there's no one in standard across NBA teams. I think you see certain email service providers and just even taking a further step back, data warehouse providers and CRM and marketing cloud solutions. I, I think you're gonna hear a lot of the big company names that are generally being leveraged across teams. Um, you know, five, six years ago, if we were having this conversation, I think there were uh, more uh, varied players in the space, but I think we've sort of reached predominant consensus in a lot of these areas in terms of what teams are generally using to collect information. Because if you think about it, a lot of these teams, they're not just a team anymore. They're thinking about their venue. They're thinking about other opportunities to collect fan information. They're thinking more globally. Um, so having the industry standard, or frankly, the best in class is more important today than it was even a few years ago. And that will continue to be the trend over time. I think it's also a function of, um, I, I agree with everything Zach just said, and I would also just add that I think it's also a function of the other technology in place. Um, a move from having, if your ESP is, uh, you know, if your email platform is also your fan database, then that's a different requirement for what you need than if you have a separate fan warehouse or customer warehouse uh, and email is just executing on that. Um, it, it, you know, um, I think that there's a couple of different pieces. I, I agree that we're kind of becoming more uniform, especially as, um, organizations get smarter about their tech stacks and about making sure they've got the right products while also not trying to Frankenstein something together that's going to be impossible to manage, um, which, you know, I've done and it's not fun. Um, so trying to be better about, about all of those things, I think, has made us smarter. The trick is also that when you think about, like, at a league level, when you're looking at what the clubs are doing, no one's on the same time frame. Everyone has a different length right. agreement that started at different times that you can't just say, okay, next week we're all going to start on a new platform because somebody's got four years left on their contract. So trying to, so it takes a little longer to get to where we want to get to on that. But I think that clubs are getting, uh, are getting smarter about the different pieces involved uh, and that the ESP is a critical piece of it, but it's not the only piece of it. Um, and, and that's, uh, I think that's been helpful. I've got a couple more questions, but we've got questions coming in from the audience. Keep them coming in. We'll try to get to all of them. Um, I want to ask you guys what you wish you knew when you started that you know now. Um, I don't think we're that far along in this process, and there's a lot more to grow. Uh, I've heard that a number of times during this during this session, which is a good thing. But what do you wish you knew when you started uh, that you know now, Vince? Uh, let's let's kick it to you first. Um, yeah, I think. Um... You know, look, whenever you're, you're talking about these relationships and you've got, you're, you're talking about leagues and, and partners and individual sports teams or properties, um, I think that the, it's, it is complex. Um, you know, what, and anytime you're managing partnerships and multiple stakeholder relationships, what I, what I think has been exciting is when we do have, um, when we have a league and its properties step up and say, we're already messaging and nurturing these fans through our own channels. This is this is happening today, but the left hand doesn't always see what the right hand's doing. Um, and and you know, I think that I think Curran and Zach would be honest that like at times, like these are relationships where you know sometimes things are really good, but there's also sticky points on it. Um, so if we can, what I, I'd say has been exciting is when we're, we're able to create that better collaboration, um, it's, it's amazing how, uh, how much better these partnerships go. Um, you know, teams and leagues working more closely together, we start to see the fans being, you know, even on that email question, like if we can get these fan opportunities into, whether it's an email channel or another channel and into those, in front of those fans, instead of living 
on a in somebody's you know SQL data warehouse or some environment where they don't see the light of day, that's really where the magic happens. So I, I think that that's what I would say. Like I, I think coming in, I think with, with some of the wins we're seeing now, um, I, I would say that I, I I wish we had some of those those strong stories like coming right out of the gate because it would have been probably easier to paint that picture of just like how much more cohesive this can be for for teams and leagues and, and the fans themselves. Thank you, Vince. Curran. Uh, I, I wish I'd known that my mother was correct when she said I should have gone to law school. Um, I think that's the <laughs> I, I mean, hey, look, as someone who went to law school, I will take that with a sense of pride. <laughs> yeah, I think I missed an opportunity. Um, I, I, think, um, um, <laughs> I think about understanding um, just keeping in mind how many different stakeholders were in place is something that I, uh, I think I didn't fully appreciate. I think I understood from a club perspective, from a, um, a you know, a vendor, a partner perspective, from a league perspective, but I don't think I was thinking about the different stakeholders within each of those organizations and that, you know, you need to get buy-in from a, from a lot of people. Um, you don't necessarily need a unanimous vote every time, but you gotta be pretty close. And so making sure that you haven't just thought through, we think this is important and this is how we're gonna do it and we're gonna execute on this data and we're gonna provide a better experience, but that there's gotta be each group of people, whether it's sales or marketing or uh, development operations or um, you know all the other technical components to this, um, data strategy, or all have to you know be satisfied with a plan and think it works. And you have to think very globally and cohesively to the point where you need a, a pretty robust kind of plan of attack on how you want to do this, this sort of this sort of a large scale, you know, data uh, sharing um, uh, kind of initiative um, in advance of even starting it. Um, because as you go and you're going to you're going to run out of hiccups and uh, all the time. Uh, but as you go through it, having to rebuild whole programs or concepts of stuff repeatedly, it takes a long time. Um, and I think that I wish I'd, I probably, you know, could have been a little better prepared for that on, on my end. Thanks, Karen. Appreciate your honesty. Zach? In an effort to not just agree with everything Vincent Curran said, I'll take a slightly different approach. I, I think from an order of operations standpoint, we've done a good job in terms of planning and moving forward in collaboration with the teams. Um, what I wish I knew at the beginning of the process was, you know, we've been very focused and we've talked about this a lot already on this discussion, the notion of creating comprehensive fan profiles, and being able to use that for a litany of sales and marketing and partnership use cases. Um, we've had a lot of teams communicate with us throughout the process. Hey, it would be great to know um, when Zach Shapiro engages with the MBA app and does this so that we can then communicate with him um, in a corresponding fashion so that we can sort of build that personalized and direct um, experience with them as quickly as possible. Um, that take is, that's obviously a lot more granular detail than just that comprehensive profile that we've been talking about. It's something that obviously Vince's Stellar Algo technology can handle and do a really good job. He talked about a lot of the plays already that you can do with unified data, but also just action-based data that we could be able to deliver to teams more quickly so that they can leverage that information in their own marketing use cases. Because the reality is, not only have data teams grown uh, on the team side over time, so have marketing teams. Uh, and they've gotten incredibly sophisticated in what they do in terms of creating broad paid media strategies to that direct personalized experience on the on a fan to fan communication. So we want to make sure we are providing that obviously macro perspective, but those micro details so that they can quickly action and deliver personalized experiences to fans. We're going to get to one more audience question. We're going to get to my last question. My last question is going to be to ask these guys if they will leave us with our SBJ Live actionable insights. I've asked them to think of one to two actionable insights that they will leave the audience here with. Maybe those actual insight, actionable insights will tie a little bit to what they wish they knew uh, before they started, but we will see. Uh, before I do that, though, I'm going to drop in the chat a link to uh, SBJ's conference drive, which is in September which will go into even more detail about how we can use data to inform decision-making uh, as it relates to working with brands uh, and delivering fan experiences. I hope to see all of you there. Uh, this question is from Joe Cocazzo. Joe, I apologize if I mispronounce your name. How is data aggregation and the associated insight creating new experiences for fans as opposed to optimizing sales and marketing interactions for the club or league? 
Joe, I think we touched on that a little bit earlier, but guys, you want to give a few more examples? We did go pretty deeply into the brand side, but let's let's if you have examples of specific fan experiences that you're proud to share, uh, go for it. Um, and I'll let either of you jump in or I'll call on. Uh, I'm, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, I, you know, as I mentioned before, we, you know, we obviously have a partnership, a lot of great partnerships. We don't sell a lot of uh, customer facing uh, products. So it's, not, it, it, I think everything in the world is marketing. So I'd say everybody's in marketing, but um, really trying to find engagements that, that reach, that, that reach out to people, the right people and that are engaged in the right way. Um, and whether it's, um, you know, who your favorite club is, making sure the content is dedicated to that, whether it's le different levels of engagement and avidity, um, you know, uh, <clears throat> earlier we talked about how purchase data is the most important data. That is, is of course, true. Not everyone buys things. So how do we engage with people um, who are engaging digitally in different ways? Um, we have, you know, a more casual, new to hockey um, digital engagements online that are like little personality quizzes. And you find out which mascot's going to be your best friend. Um, that's for a more casual, new, new to hockey fan. Well, then we have some more kind of what would call like a more avid or engaged fan who knows a little bit more about the game. Um, and, you know, we have, you make the call, we'll replay a play on the ice and can, can you make the call that the linesman made about offsides or not? Um, and, 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 and we find that different people engage in different ways with different frequency, but really trying to create something that's fun that keeps people engaged when it's not a game. Um, and that's not just the off season, but, you know, during the middle of the day, what can people do that like are thinking, we'll make sure hockey is front of mind um, especially for, uh, you know, not just, excuse me, not just for people who live in our markets who can go to games, but also people who are a little further away and maybe they can't. And how do we make sure we're bringing the right kind of hockey engagement to those people and making it a fun experience? Um, and, uh, you know, maybe that's um, those things I mentioned. Maybe it's we want people to play along with our bingo game that happens during, you know, during like the Stanley Cup finals. We'll have games where people can play bingo about events that happen in the game. How do we get people engaged when they're watching on TV and not just about being in the arena and really trying to create those experiences. And we've done that really based off of and, uh, how people engage, the type of fans we're reaching out to um, and trying to make that a, an, a, an enjoyable experience that doesn't seem like it's a forced kind of uh, uncomfortable thing. It's really more about the, the enjoyment of the moment and just kind of thinking about it, not making it a part of a bigger uh, sales effort. Um, I think it's been really positive for us. We've seen great, great response. Thanks, Craig. I would, hey, Joe, go ahead, Zach. Yeah, I would just say from the MBA side, in, in addition to things that Curran just mentioned, we're obviously very focused on content and making sure that we're serving the right types of content to our diff different segments of fans, not only through the NBA app, but across social channels, what have you. So I think having the this data aggregation and unified profiles and insights, I, I mentioned some of the models that we have in place for more sales efforts, but obviously when you think about the segments you're able to build with all of these data points in a singular spot to assess, create insights and build models off of, that empowers you and enables you to serve up different types of content to different types of fans. Um, we obviously see throughout the playoffs here for us, the, the rise of somebody like Anthony Edwards and making sure globally everybody's going to be engaging with somebody like him. But where are the different pockets of fans engaging with different types of teams and players that maybe we didn't know about so that we can drive further engagement with those fans, make sure they are um, as engaged with us as possible in our most important part of the season. Thank you, Zach. Thanks for the question again, Joe. All right, gentlemen, your actionable insights, your SVJ Live actionable insights for today's episode. Let me start with Vince. Go for it, Vince. What do people in the audience need to know if they're interested in investing in a technology that will help them improve decision making through uh, through data? Yeah, I, I think like honestly, I because I'm a sports tech CEO, I'm going to go all OKRs on everybody, and my actionable insight would be. You know, think hard about what are the outcomes, what are those top outcomes that you're trying to drive here are? Like when you think about your fans and your fan data, what are the top business outcomes you're trying to drive? And then from there, you can think about what, who are the, the how do I use my partners better um, to, to better drive those outcomes? And are there, uh, are there fan opportunities that we could have, you know, at our, at our fingertips um, easier? Um, are there data data points or information on our fans or channels we could be leveraging better? Um, you know, if we were partnering closer, um, 
you know, and that's if you're a league or if you're an individual team or partner, I think we need to be thinking that way. So, so yeah, write down your, your outcomes. It's amazing how many, how many people have a hard time, like writing down those top outcomes, um, especially when you think about like these partnerships, but then, but then start a conversation. And I think like, you know, if there's interest and there's demand, that's where we get really excited because, you know, we, we are sort of the, the technology and the, the, you know, process know-how, you know, that makes it possible to bring those, those fan opportunities to light. Thank you, Vince. Curran. Um, I would say that it's, it's about putting yourself in other people's shoes and trying to think about the project and the product that you're putting together. Um, if you're leading an initiative, uh, any kind of initiative around launching, you know, a better understanding of customer data, the sharing aspect of it, collection, execution, activation, whatever, you're passionate about it and you care. Uh, it is important to remember that every you will need help from a lot of people who don't care as much. And so how do you put, um, I, I think that um, putting yourself in the shoes of everyone impacted, not just the fans, uh, although that should be first, uh, in our case, not just the clubs, although to me that is second, but also, okay, we're going to need technical support. We're going to need legal support. We're going to have to have marketing support. The clubs are going to have to go, by the way, not every fan is the same. We're going to have to think about different fans engaging with the same thing. How's that going to hit? And I think if you're able to put all that together um, and before you think about those aspects of it, before you start to create your roadmap and what your project is, you'll have a greater level of success. Um, and it will remind you that you cannot let the perfect be the enemy of the good. You've got to have a good product, but you don't have to wait for everything to be perfect because you will be waiting until the end of time. And so I think that if you're able to work with those different groups and the stakeholders and thinking about, okay, if I was in this group, what would I think, right? The first thing I think when I go talk to one of our clubs is how would I feel if I was the club and the league was coming to talk to me and I try to frame things in that context, um, you will have, I think, a greater level of success and more buy-in. Um, it's more work up front. It's less work later. It's less trouble later and it's less failure later. And I think that's what, uh, you know, that's what matters the most. Thank you, Curran. Zach, your SBJ actionable insight for this episode. Uh, if you don't know where to start, step one, talk to Vince. He knows what he's doing. He's been around the block. He's been on the team side. He leads a great organization now. Uh, he has a lot of great perspective. Uh, step two, going to double down on what Curran said there. Consider your stakeholders. Listen to your partners, listen to your stakeholders. For us on the league side, obviously our, our top stakeholder are the teams. Uh, they have the best understanding of their fans and what they can ultimately get out of this information um, in terms of their sales and marketing experiences. Um, that's not even just a at the start of the project, that's an, an iterative line of communication that needs to happen because we've even seen in the infancy of the project that we have here on the MBA side, uh, we've gotten a lot of recommendations from teams that have helped inform the way uh, we've revised our development roadmap uh, in terms of the data and the insights and products that we're ultimately able to build on top of that in partnership with Vince and his team. And then really, really quickly, it, it might be a little hokey, but consider consider the fan or consumer, depending on your company first. Um, and what I really mean by that is for me, before we went into this initiative, I made sure I downloaded the MBA app. I signed up for MBA ID. I made different purchases, which I was doing as a fan anyways. but actually hit on those touch points that you are expecting to collect data on your fans from and then see how it ties together on the back end because i think having that true understanding of what a fan journey looks like in terms of all these different touch points is going to frankly humanize the data a little bit more and it will make it easier for you in partnership uh to the people that you collaborate with whether it's teams partners etc uh it's going to help you bring those use cases to life really bring those objectives and key metrics that vince alluded to uh to life and make sure you're sort of driving towards the right outcomes zach vince curran thank you so much for taking time to do this to the audience thank you so much for being here thank you to stellar algo for the support we will see everyone next week where we have another great episode of SBJ Live. Until then, take care. Thanks so much. Thanks, Dan.